everyone. My name is Ghost. I was the project lead on the S3B Viking, uh, along with Little Roll, and uh, we had some assistance from some others as well. Um, so this Viking is designed to be as realistic as we possibly could make the Viking in Stormworks. And we used the actual Nate Ops manual and referenced uh, pilot testimonials and other reference ma images and materials uh, as much as possible whenever we were uh, building this aircraft and s because of that the startup is extremely complicated so uh, because I know some people are visual learners I thought I'd make a quick startup video just to walk you through the steps and you can learn them on your own from there so uh, to begin uh, the only step on the outside of the aircraft uh, in, in real life you'd also be doing a visual check but the only step on the outside of the aircraft is to remove the ground safety pin on the bomb bay now you can hop in the crew door. You can close it if you want. It technically doesn't have to be closed just yet. And I'll just run you through the cockpit. This is defined as the pilot side console. This is the instrument panel. These are the pilot and COTAC instrument panels. The uh, co-pilot is named COTAC because they are the uh, co-tactical officer on board the aircraft. This is the center console. This is the uh, overhead console and that is the Kotec console as well. Um, back here uh, on the right uh, behind the Kotec is the TACO, that stands for Tacno Tactical Coordination Officer. And then back here is the Senso, which is also enlisted, and they are the Sensor Officer, uh, or sen Sensor Operating Officer. They're responsible for things like the Mad Boom and such. So to begin, uh, the S3 has an auxiliary power unit, and that is a stimulated in Stormworks, and so our auxiliary power unit is uh, simulated using a battery because we do not have a way to do it small enough. Um, the auxiliary power unit is started via the APU start lever on the back of the console. So you pull the lever. And before you do that, you have to check um, and see that you have over 2800 PSI in your APU accumulator. And if you don't, you can actuate, actuate this pump to raise it up to 2800. And that has to be held for about a second after while you're holding it. So well, if the APU start lever is on, uh, now you need to go to your APU gen, enable that, and you need to enable both power buses, which will give power to the cockpit and all other aircraft systems. And then you need to turn on your emergency hydraulic pump, uh, and then you can set your cabin temp as required. This won't function until you have the bleed air, but you can set it if you need to. Cabin temp controls the heater in the cabin. Um, so now, now that we have the APU started and you have your audio, audio feedback to the APU, next thing we need to do is start a line. So this light is going to start flashing, uh, it's like once a second, and that takes about 50 seconds to align the INS. And if you don't align the INS, your navigation systems basically won't work. They'll be extremely, they'll be an extremely large error. So now you're going to want to go to the co-pilot CDN, Kotak CDNU, turn that on. Uh, you're going to want to go to your oxygen, turn that on. This is not simulated, but it's something that we included because uh, it's something that a lot of people would like. So now you're going to turn on your your interior lighting as required, um, y and you could set also you could you have a floodlight, or and you can set your flight instrument and console lighting. That should not be on. Okay. So now uh, the next step would be the throttle, and you need to make sure that is in the off position. Uh, you need to make sure your wing flap is in the up position. That would, that means it reads zero, so you have to press the flap position forward uh, a couple times. Uh, the next step is going to be make sure your launch bar is set to retract. Your master arm, your search power, and your ECM arm should all be off. Your AOA, airspeed, altitude, and VSI, so that's these four, should all uh, read the correct. AOA will be freaking out a bit considering you're on the ground, you're not moving. Now, the next step is your MPD is going to be off. Now, this is odd for a lot of people, but that's just how they did it in the S3. Uh, they turn it on after takeoff, typically. Uh, the fuel gauge, you have to check that it's reading the right amount. It's reading 17.3. We got enough fuel. Now the next step is going to be uh, we want to make sure that uh, fuel idle controller is set to norm, not flight idle. And that just changes the idle speed of the engines uh, whenever you have it. The throttle set to zero. Flare retract, you want to make sure that's set to retract. The radio, you're going to want to set that as required. Channel 16 is the standard. Uh, this is Sheepdog's radio. 
uh, can be used with MRG and such. Uh, the feed tank interconnect, you are going to cycle that and cycle it off, and that just uh, that can interconnect the fuel flow for the two engines. And so now we do the dome light, which I already set on, but that would be set as required. You could keep that off if you were doing daytime op daytime operations, so it doesn't really matter. I'm keeping it on for illumination. Uh, the bleed air left and right should come on. This has to do with the uh, ECS of the aircraft, and as you just heard, connections. Those that's the fuel tanks connecting. The fuel tanks cannot be pressurized if this is not on, and therefore they will not function. And so now, uh, you set your formation lights as required. We're going to keep them off because we are flying alone today. The master exterior light switch would come on. The, all lights will not function. All exterior lights will not function without the switch. And then the emergency flap you need to verify is off. Okay. Now fire pull one and two. You want to cycle them. And then ignition and then ignition switches on. Okay, now we're ready to en start the engine. So we want to click start engine one. And then we're going to want to monitor the number one engine RPMs. And now these are going to rise slowly. And until they hit about 2.5%, at which point we will move the throttle to idle. So there's 2.5. So now we go down here. Advanced throttle one idle. And now we're going to monitor this all the way up to 32%. Thirty-two percent is the engine's idle speed when it does not have generator load. Now a lot of people are going to notice the aircraft is actually rotating. That is a Stormworks bug. We cannot change it. Okay, we're going to do it. Thirty percent is enough, so we're going to do the gen on. It's going to drop back down. That's fine. Okay, so now we need to turn on the hydraulic press, and you're going to see that this is just about 3,000 PSI right now. That's right where we want it. Uh, it'll, it might come down a bit considering the generator load. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we can flip the start engine one off. And at this point, now that the aircraft, the engine started, we want to close the crew door. And flip the start engine two switch. We're going to start the number two. Start. Now this is basically the same process, we want to monitor this engine to 2.5%, at which point we will flip the throttle to idle. Now we might have to skip a few things so I can get out of the hangar. But I think we should be fine. Yeah, we'll be fine. And so we can reset the master caution if any of the conditions meant to illuminate this uh, happen, it will start flashing and you can just reset it by pressing reset. Okay, uh, we're going to turn on the generator and we are going to set the number two hydraulic press on. Uh, and now at this point, uh, we can, we're going to shut off the number two start and you see the RPS are going to get started sink right now. Um, and then after at that point we want to one at a time cycle the bleed air systems. Okay. Now this is extremely important. You need to go back and shut off the APU. And if you do not do this, the aircraft will stall the number one engine because and to explain, the APU exhaust is that gray box uh, with the red outline and we, it'll actually open if you have the APU running. I didn't demonstrate that, but if the number one engine is throttled up, it will intake the APU exhaust and it can cause a compressor stall, and it has in many cases in real life. So the APU always has to be off for throttle manipulation of the number one engine. Okay, so now the APU is off, but we want to press the fuel idle controller, and now with the fuel idle controller, you're changing to a higher idle, so the engine idle speeds should rise significantly. You want to monitor them, and then drop them back down. Okay, now the next step is going to be the FCT tests. So you go up here, connect the FCTs, and so if you look in an external view of the aircraft, you can monitor the movement of the aircraft's flight control surfaces. And it looks 
our cars are functioning fully, so we can turn on our off RSEG tests. Now the external lights, we just want to check what, what we need, so we're going to turn on position and anti-collision. Since my master exterior is on, they should be lit up. They are. So at this point, we want to check our resting hook. It did extend safely. Now we want to retract. And then we want to activate our NWS by pressing 2. This hotkey can be activated from either Kotak or, TAC or um, the pilot. And at this point, we want to make sure that the wing and fin are spread and locked. And now we can turn off our parking brake. We can uh, begin our taxi. And you should use very low throttle, so like 5 to 10 percent. And, you, and because it's NWS, you can use your rudder input to steer. So for takeoff, your flaps should be to 65%, so you want to press the flap position down twice. That will bring flaps to 65% extension. Now, check that your APU is off, that your flight controls are good, flare is set to retract, which it is, and that your Kotak CDNU is active. And at this point, you can turn off EHP, you actually could have done that uh, post startup. EHP doesn't have um, that much practicality after startup. So, I'm just going to check the engine RPM to see how it looks good. Okay, now at this point we can turn off the, we can turn on the MPDs after takeoff. So we're just going to accelerate here. This aircraft basically lifts off on her own, but you can give her a bit of back, gear up, so NWS also requires the gears to deploy to the act. And with that, that concludes the startup and takeoff of the Now the flaps are up. Now that concludes the startup and takeoff of our S3 Viking. Uh, I hope you guys have fun with this aircraft. It's been a total blast. I don't think I've ever had more fun building an aircraft. Watching and uh, 